Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Evan Lowe, State Assembly Member representing San Jose Silicon Valley. I'm here with Cheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook. At Facebook. At Facebook. We're at Facebook. Thanks for allowing us to be here. Thank you for coming to visit us. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And so it's a pleasure and opportunity to be able to speak with you about California and the presence of Facebook and the direction of where the company is going and also perhaps some involvement of you personally in their type of engagement as well. I love that. Well, thank you for coming to Facebook and thank you for um, representing us and having such a careful eye on the future of jobs in California, the future of innovation of California, the role technology plays. Obviously, the part of our state that you represent you know, is this industry and your commitment to making sure that technology continues to develop and works for everyone and your leadership is something we are very grateful for. What's well, a collective effort? Well, Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> most certainly. You know, so along those lines, let's just try to get right into it. Oftentimes, politics is seen as sort of a dirty word and an engagement, and there's lack of engagement, and we don't want to engage with uh, the political arena. Whereas you have decided, no, you personally want to be involved, and you believe it's the company's philosophy to be engaged as well, too. Can you sort of talk a little bit about how you've seen that role continuing on? We believe we have a really deep responsibility to the people who use our platform, the two billion people all over the world, but also a really deep responsibility to the people in our community. We are a global company, but we are a California-based company. Our headquarters are here. We were started here. We were founded here. We grow here. And so we really care about engagement with the local community. We care about how people are using our products. I don't know if you can separate out individuals sharing from community efforts because as individuals share, it becomes a community effort. So Hurricane Harvey, just one of many recent examples. We had over 150,000 people on Facebook contributing to those efforts. Mm. That's pretty amazing, right? Because those people really wanted to step up and become part of a community, part of what was happening. So whether it's politics and people running for office, whether it's individual people who represent sharing their views. I mean, think about your constituents, how they can have direct communication with you. Every member of the US Congress now has a Facebook presence. And they're communicating directly to whether it's the community things we care about. We think helping people engage along the spectrum is part of our job. And we have a deep responsibility to not just give them the technology to do it, but make sure that technology is used to help them do it. For sure. And so the political climate right now can be quite divisive depending on the type of rhetoric that mm -hmm. continues on. But you believe that Facebook plays a role in helping to shape and provide a venue for dialogue. So one of my favorite examples is Elise Stefanik. She's a Republican. I think she's still the youngest member of the, of the House. Oh. Yeah, and she ran for office. And she made a promise that she would post her rationale for every controversial vote on Facebook. So that's real transparency. Mm -hmm. That is, I am saying, if I vote this way, I think she doesn't do the kind of ones that don't really need mm -hmm. explanations, but anything where she feels like I need to explain myself, she does that directly on Facebook. Um, and I think that's, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that there's many features that allow for engagement from elected representatives to identify that they are, in fact, constituents as well. So you can see that how to engage with different individuals and how we can help deliver and broaden the horizon for a lot of people. No, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, And how about in terms of the philosophy that you have with the company and engaging with employees and the presence that Facebook has with the state, how can the state continue to work collaboratively with Facebook on ensuring that we have the economy continuing to grow? Well, it's such a great question because what what we need is investment in our future. And I know that is what you and your colleagues are working on in Sacramento. It's what state houses are working on all across the nation. So here are the things I think matter. STEM, science, math, education. We have to prepare our children and our constituents. We have to prepare people for the jobs of the future. 65% of schools in California don't offer any computer science. Mm -hmm. And even within schools that offer it, doesn't mean everyone's taking it. When you think about what's going forward. By the year 2020, there are going to be a million, a million unfilled CS and computer-related jobs in our economy. In a time when jobs are so critical, when every child deserves a great education and a great future, 
these are great jobs. They are high paying. They have impact. They, can, they have great flexibility. I tell women all the time, go into STEM. Mm -hmm. These are jobs that give you more flexibility so that you can do the things you want to do. We need to train our children, and that is something I know you're taking very seriously. We also have a lot to worry about in terms of inequality. One in five people in California, you don't need me to tell you this, yeah. is living below the poverty line, and the poverty line is quite low. Many, many more people are really struggling to make ends meet. I'm personally so grateful for your help in trying to get more money to the California-wide food banks. Yeah. Um, I've worked on this for a long time. You were one of the people I called for help, and you not <laughs> only weighed in you know, at the state level, but you really helped me um, call some of, your other, sure. some of your other colleagues so that we could all get behind food security. Yeah. Kids can't learn when they're hungry. Sure. Kids have disciplinary problems when they're hungry, and it's not the kids. It's basic needs. We have to provide basic education. We have to provide basic food security and healthy food. And we have to give everyone the chance to be part of the growing part of the economy. Mm -hmm. It sounds like we need to have more role models continuing to act in that way that government can't do it alone, but that we need that type of advocacy to hold our elected representatives accountable for the needs that we have in our community as well, too. So I hope others in the private sector will continue to see that it's important to get their engagement as well on these issues. That's right. And when we talk about role models, especially as we were just talking about STEM, I can't resist the urge to talk about women. Mm -hmm. and underrepresented minorities. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what we know. Underrepresented minorities, blacks, Hispanics, those numbers are too low. And we're not going to get our industry, the people and the talent we need, without changing those numbers. And so you're right, we need better role models. We need better provision of the STEM education people need. And we need to make sure that opportunity is created and given to everyone. Sure. You know, along those lines, you've obviously been a role model for a lot of individuals, both in public and private sector. What's one piece of advice that you would give to young people in saying, OK, I really admire Cheryl. I want to try to follow in her footsteps. There are some unique barriers and challenges that exist in our community today. How can we overcome some of those things? What kind of advice would you give young people? Well, the question um, I really came to to write Lean In, my book on women and equality, was on what would you do if you weren't afraid? You know, what would you do if you weren't afraid? We have too many messages in our society that tell little girls not to lead. If you ask audiences of people, raise your hand if you've been called bossy in your life, in your childhood. Very few men's hands will mm. grow up. And all the women, a lot of the women. And that's what the data shows, that bossy is a word that's used more than four times more for little girls than little boys. Why? Because when a little boy leads, it's expected. But when a little girl leads, we don't expect that. But the good news is these are things we can cha change today. I've told lots of people, when you see a little girl called bossy, maybe this weekend on a playground, you go right up to that little girl, you say, that little girl's not bossy. That little girl has executive leadership skills. Nice, very <laughs> nice. Men, so for someone like myself who considers themselves an enlightened male, what can men do to help facilitate these things you sort of just talked about, talk about executive leadership? Are there other things that we can do to be purposeful in helping to expand the diverse variety of skill sets that we need? Such a great question, and I love when men ask that question. But yes, a number of things. One is recognize the power of diversity. Diversity is not just the right thing to do, even though it is. It's the smart thing to do. Diverse teams make better decisions. Diverse teams have better performance. Less diverse teams believe they make better decisions. So the actual performance of diverse teams is higher, but the expected performance of the team, when you're not diverse, they think they're doing better. And that's a mistake. You know, make sure you're hearing all the voices when you have the meeting of your staff. I, mm -hmm. You have two people from your team with you today, one man, one woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but make sure you're getting all the voices at the table. And I think in our personal lives, we're not going to get to equality in the workplace until we get to equality in the home. Mm -hmm. So for any man out there, and this isn't just for you, being a more active father has benefits for your kids. At any income level, no matter what else is going on, children with more active fathers, fathers who do things with them, do better emotionally, do better in school, do better professionally. Mm -hmm. Relationships are stronger when people are sharing the housework just as much. I also think it's really important for us to recognize that companies have a very strong role to play in policies. There's public policy, but at the state and local level, we're the only developed country in the world that doesn't offer paid maternity leave. Mm. The only one. We're one of the only developed countries in the world that doesn't offer family medical leave that's paid. Mm -hmm. And we need better public policy at every level. 
we need better company policies. Companies can do better. I'm proud of some of the things Facebook has done. We made sure that all of our contractors in the U.S. were paid a $15 yeah. living wage as a minimum. They get vacation and sick days, things that everyone mm -hmm. should get, especially as there are more contractors. Um, I've actually spent a lot of time recently working on bereavement leave. Wow. You know, coming out of my own personal mm -hmm. experience, I was very proud of what Facebook did before. Mm -hmm. We offered 10 days for immediate family and five days for extended family. Most people get three days, if anything. Mm -hmm. um, but we moved to 20 days. And when you think about losing a spouse or a child, that's not that much. Right. And people need it. And so there are more and more companies based in California so far. SurveyMonkey, where my husband mm -hmm. worked, um, Chegg, Airbnb, that have really taken the lead and joined other companies doing the right thing mm -hmm. for people. Sure. You know, oftentimes it's the chicken or the egg. And some of these policies that we want to create for all Californians is it a legislative priority for us? And so do we have legislation that requires companies? Or do we see companies sort of taking it on themselves and being proactive and saying, this is not only in the best interest of the company, but for our workforce and for California. And so having Facebook and you lead in this conversation is helpful uh, in that dialogue to making sure that we can get to the certain direction that we want it to be in, in well, California. Well, thank you. And um, so uh, in terms of the personal role that you also have in seeing government, obviously there's lots of lots of conversation about seeing that type of engagement that you've had with the public sector too. Do you have any type of encouragement specifically for women getting into public office? Yes, we want more leaders. We want more leaders in tech. We want more leaders in public office. I'm gonna look out at the audience. I hope everyone, if you're a woman, and anyone but women, underrepresented minorities, step up, run for office, speak up, Run for, and I know young people, my mm -hmm. niece testified before your committee is a great follower of yours, young people, run for student government. We've got more boys than girls at the senior levels in high school and colleges. Becoming class president, we can stop that today, but running for office is huge, but also really seeking those leadership opportunities in every field. Such Wonderful. a great message. Wonderful. Well, finally, might you have any lasting messages for any of my colleagues in the legislature in California as we think about the short-term and long-term goals for the state and where we want to be? Well, I'm proud to live in California. It is a state that has a long history of exploration, of believing life can be better, of building a better life. And we need to make sure that that is not just for the industries that are thriving and the people that work in them, but for everyone. And so our goal is, is to make sure that everyone's included, and I know that's what you're working on. So everything from making sure every child in this state has healthy food, no one should go hungry in mm -hmm. California or anywhere. To making sure that every child has a great education, to making sure that our laws and political framework and our companies work for everyone, that's all work we have to do together. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Well, you heard our marching orders from Cheryl, and we have some work to be done, but thank you so much for your time and your hospitality, and we look forward to the continued partnership with Facebook in the state of California. Me too. Thank you. Thank you.